I'm Fred Binka, formerly of the Navrongo Health Research Center and formerly of the School of Public Health at the University of Ghana and currently the Vice Chancellor of the University of Health and Allied Sciences in Ho, Ghana. Those were very challenging times. We were based in northern Ghana in Navrongo and just starting with the basic communication, our post office box, we got mail through Burkina Faso. So people kept on wondering what is wrong with these guys. Ghana Vitamin A Supplementation Trials, PO Box 57, Po Burkina Faso. Everybody thought something was wrong. But the idea was that we're 900 kilometers north of Accra. There was no communication between Accra and Navrongo. In fact, mail never arrived. So we didn't try to send mail through uh, Ghana. We sent our mail through Burkina Faso, which had a better system. So you couldn't talk about telephone, fax, nothing. So we started really fighting to be connected with the world because you couldn't just continue to do research and be so isolated. And finally, we landed on sat life. That's a whole story. And that was magic. Somehow with sat life, we got the first antenna, which was a, a, a long pole that allowed us to get mail two or three times in a, in a day. And most often, yeah, you had to make the mails very short. So sometimes you saw the mail, but it would take two or three passes before the mails dropped. And everybody will jump and say, hooray, we've got mail. You know, so we got to know the times and we were looking into the sky always thinking that we'll see the satellite uh, when it's passing because the radio starts and then the links are made and the mails are, are uploaded and then they are downloaded. And that certainly was really great for us. But then we found that was not so good enough. So we pushed and pushed till we got the antenna that was revolving. So it, 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 you could see the antenna revolve and that was a real miracle for people in the Navrongo city. I mean, they would come there every time around 10 o'clock and see this thing moving by itself. So it's, it connects with the satellite when it's just over the horizon and then it flips and flips and flips and flips till it loses it over the other part of the horizon. And people are shouting, yeah, mail has dropped, mail has dropped. And that was efficient because we got more mail and we were able to upload much more mail. That was really the beginning. We started with the vitamin A supplementation trials where we were giving large doses of vitamin A to young children under five and we're trying to measure its impact on its on child who survive our mortality. So that was the first trial at the time. And so our communications were mainly with the United Kingdom. Then we went on and got some support from both TDR, WHO and um, IDRC. And that extended our communications across into, into the US, into, uh, uh, what, uh, into Ottawa in Canada, and then in Geneva. So we started doing those works, looking at some of the cultural issues that were uh, within the Kassana Canada district. And then we switched on to start the first bed net trial, which was in 1992, 93. Uh, so that was one of the major times when we started uh, actually running the sat life and getting communications with all these partners around uh, the world. Uh, so, yes, we also looked at that uh, and it was trying to identify the impact of sleeping at uh, insecticide treated nets and its effects on child mortality, which we demonstrated a 20% reduction in all cause mortality. Bed net trials were 1993 to 1995, and I think we were the uh, harbingers of the new interventions that was going to excite the world uh, because the demonstration of that impact on child mortality was really very, very uh, well, well received. And then we had to sort out the problems of trying to make sure that people did sleep under the nets and that the nets were available. There was also a big contention at the time whether this works only in areas of low transmission and that maybe in very high transmission areas, we may be creating problems by reducing uh, immunity and having a rebound effect on mortality. Uh, the good news is that all of that is now history we demonstrated that this works in every setting. And uh, we are happy that many people are sleeping on the net and we are reducing child mortality across the globe. 
I mean, people uh, started coming one at a time, but they were surprised that we ourselves used to stand outside and look and see this thing flip off. You know, had this uh, staccato movements, turns a bit, turns and turns, and then finally it stops. And then it comes back to its normal position, and we know that the, the males are gone. First of all, we were very uh, young scientists then, uh, and we were really isolated. 900 kilometers north of Accra. The roads were very bad. We, we could take us two days to come to Accra those days. And there was no airport near us. So with no telephones, uh, the best sometimes we did was a telegram. But obviously, you couldn't share data. So we had no access to library. We had no access to journals. And we needed to be comparing notes with what was going on in the other sites. So this was so critical it made a lot of difference and it also then allowed us to be productive because then we could submit proposals to all these funding agencies and before then it was just impossible you not we not even hear that there was a call or an rfa all we hear is that some people are doing something new but this really helped us to get our act together and to be part of the scientific world it was obvious at the time i remember uh the expression on the face of uh uh, uh, Savamos at the time was surprised that we felt this was paramount, that there was a need to make the connectivity to work. You know, everybody would think that, what is this, what's wrong with these scientists? Yes, this was so important and we managed to convince the partners and I'm happy that that became one of the major activities of the, uh, the partnership. And I think it's, it worked very well. Uh, it brought most, most of the country scientists in Africa together, east, west, north and south. It was just the right thing to do. And started to create the bond between the malaria scientists. And you, you will see that on this continent, even today, the malaria scientists are more connected than the other scientists in HIV, TB. I think TB is the worst. Uh, HIV somehow, but malaria scientists are all over the place and still connected. This is just happened to be the way to do things because even at that time, we started having these multi-site trials that were, were going on, on IPTI, IPTP, name it. So you needed to be connected to form the right networks to be able to compete for the grants that were available. And, and, and this was so important. Secondly, it also made grant writing and proposal writing much easier because you could look for the data, you could look for the published works through all the libraries that were available and so on. And also it helps you to publish. It's much easier to submit your papers, get the reviews on time and meet the deadlines for the journals and so on. So in all, this was so crucial, very crucial. Apart from the fact that, I mean, some very simple things were possible. I mean, just take logistics. You wanted to buy some reagent, some small equipment and you are the only person sitting somewhere in the bush it's 900 kilometers away you know what happened then was that you could just send an email to one of your colleagues and you say look we're looking for this what has worked for you 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 see a, a small picture of what has worked for them and they can give you the directions and give you the catalog numbers and so on and you could order that this looked so trivial but this used to be a major problem for most people who were working in isolation. And I, I wasn't surprised that the MinCom was uh, one of the things that the scientists asked for. And it was one of the most successful products that was delivered during this main partnership. That was the challenge for That's you, Julia, and others to yeah. get that going. And I think he was surprised that a malaria meeting will say, number one, connectivity. You know, they're expecting all some kinds of reagents and equipment and so on. But connectivity, so important and you guys did a great job for my own work i think recently uh two days ago i saw a blog from somebody in uh, john hawkins who published uh something to do with what we thought was the protection of uh, people who had um, uh, who slept in sexual treated badness we showed that if you are about 100 meters away you are protected whether you slept under a net or not if you the 100 meters and he showed that a group had used that in modeling and they had demonstrated that if you had a 75 percent 
coverage, you could eliminate malaria in an area. I thought, wow, I was, I was really surprised. But still, these things are, are still going on. People are working around the clock. And that's the part that makes you happy. The second part is that we, through these collaborations and these uh, studies that we did, have trained many people. And most of those guys now are, are the big guys. So we're happy to see the F1 generation take over. I mean, most of them are the guys who have done the vaccine trials on the RTSS and so on in malaria. So you see there were nine countries uh, in Africa where these studies were done. And most of these people were products through the MIMCOM. From those in Ghana, uh, in Kintampo, Uusu AJ and others were from Navrongo. Uh, you have Chiri Agbenega and Co, who worked early on on uh, the uh, Artemisin products. Then you had Salim Abdallah and Co in Tanzania. You had uh, Masete and Co in Mozambique. And um, there were these other guys in um, Burkina Faso, uh, in Nuna, and so on. So at least we've had the next generation actually move up and to take up the mantle and really do bigger things than we had done in the past and I'm hoping that many more of these younger scientists will get on board and they will take the fight to the end. The Navy group Richie. and then yeah Rich Tom Richie and others. Yeah we're still partners. Uh we're still working together. And uh you know we meet yearly at the American Society of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene that brings together lots of the malaria people around the world. So at least once a year we manage to meet compare notes and see what new is happening. But we're still working with them. In fact, when Steve and his group developed the HOPES uh, parasite uh, vaccine, uh, one of the tests they did was to ship it to Navrongo and ship it back. So they put it in, in those uh, nitrogen tanks and put it in, 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 uh, in the mail, like they do everything, and send it to Navrongo. When it arrived in Navrongo, somebody was there to take some of the specimens and see whether they, uh, they were still viable, the sporozoids. And then they shipped it back from Navrongo back to the U.S. to see what was going to happen. So, yeah, there's still this link that's going on. I'm, I'm hoping that the guys in Kintampo, who are now much more well advanced, will do some of the phase one trials on, on that vaccine. These moments in history are something sometimes just happen accidentally. I mean, the main meeting and a meeting of 1997, although it was planned, nobody knew what the effect that was going to have. But I can assure you that uh, it's had a great impact on the continent. And wherever we go, we know the number of scientists working on malaria or trained through malaria are in the lead. And it was just because of MIM. That's what was absent in HIV, and that's what has been absent in TB. So you don't find many people. That congregation started the push to put this on the agenda to put emphasis on training young people and to create opportunities for collaboration. And that's what we need. So we thank all of you who have supported us all this time. And I think we still carry the mantle and the fight against malaria, definitely, we're gonna win.